Satendranath Tagore, Bengali, Satendranatha Thakura Tiendranath Akor the 1st of June 1842 to the 9th of January 1923 was the first Indian to join the Indian Civil Service. He was an author, song composer, and linguist, and made a significant contribution towards the emancipation of women in Indian society during the British Raj. Formative years The second son of Dabendranath Tagore, elder brother of Rabindranath Tagore and grandson of Dwarkanath Tagore of the Jorasanko branch of the Tagore family of Calcutta now Kolkata, he learnt Sanskrit and English at home. A student of Hindu school, he was part of the first batch of students to appear for the entrance examinations of the University of Calcutta in 1857. He was placed in the first division and was admitted to Presidency College, as was the custom of the day. He was married early in life to Jainanadanandini Devi in 1859. The same year, he and Keshub Chunder Sen accompanied his father on a visit to Ceylon now Sri Lanka. <laughs> <laughs> Civil service For a long time, only British officers were appointed to all covenanted posts. In 1832, the posts of Munsif and Sadar Amin were created and opened to Indians. In 1833, the posts of Deputy Magistrate and Deputy Collector were created and opened to Indians. The ICS Act of 1861 established the Indian Civil Service. The Act of 1853 had already established the practice of recruiting covenanted civilians through competitive examinations, it was a daunting task to go to England and compete with the British for a position. However, his friend Manomohun Goes offered encouragement and support, and both of them set sail for England in 1862 to prepare for and compete in the civil service examinations. Satendranath was selected for the Indian Civil Service in June, 1863. He completed his probationary training and returned to India in November 1864. Manomohun Goes did not succeed in the examination for the ICS but was called to the bar. Satendranath was posted to Bombay Presidency, which then covered western parts of present-day Maharashtra, Gujarat and Sindh. After initial posting of four months in Bombay now Mumbai, he had his first active posting at Ahmedabad, with postings at numerous towns he travelled across the country. Because of his long stay away from home many in his family visited him and stayed with him for long periods. Amongst his regular visitors were his younger brothers Jyotirindranath Tagore and Rabindranath Tagore the Nobel Prize-winning poet, and his sister Swarnakumari Devi. His posting outside Bengal helped him to learn several Indian languages. He translated Bal Gangadhar Tilak's Gitarahasya and Tukaram's Abang poems into Bengali. Rabindranath Tagore had also translated some poems of Tukaram. Satendranath took an active interest in the activities of the Brahmo Samaj wherever he was posted, as for example at Ahmedabad and Hyderabad, Sindh. While in the Maharashtra region, he had close contacts with many of the leading reformers and Pratana Samaj figures. Mahadev Govind Ranada, Kashinath Trimbak Talang, Ramakrishna Gopal Bhandarkar, and Narayan Ganesh Chandavarkar. Satendranath Tagore was a district judge in Karwar, Karnataka in 1882. He served in the ICS for about 30 years and retired as judge of Sitara in Maharashtra in 1897. <laughs> <laughs> Women's emancipation Ram Mohan Roy found women of Bengal uneducated and illiterate, deprived of property rights, married before puberty, imprisoned in Purda, and murdered at widowhood by a barbaric custom of immolation known as sati. By the time Satendranath was born, sati had been banned in 1829, and the process of reformation had set in. The position of women in his society troubled him from a young age. He used to think that the Purda system in his family was not that of our own nation but a copy of Muslim practices. His visit to England where he witnessed more freedom for women helped him understand the relatively poor position of women in Indian society. After his marriage, he found in Jainanadanandini Devi an ideal partner to fulfill his thinking. When he was thrilled to witness the progress of women in the advanced society in England, he wanted to take her to England to witness the same, but his father, Devendranath Tagore, stood in the way. Back in India, Satendranath took Jainanadanandini Devi to Bombay, where she tried to live in the manner and style of the wives of the English officers of the ICS. 
When the couple returned to the ancestral home at Jorisanko for a holiday, they created a sensation in Calcutta society. They were invited to a party in the government house now Raj Bhavan. Breaking all traditional rules, Jainanadanandini Devi accompanied her husband to the party. There she was, a lone Bengali woman in the midst of hundreds of English women. Prasanna Kumar Tagore of the Pathoriagata branch of the family, who was present in the party, could not bear the sight of a wife of a family member in such an open place and left immediately, in shame and anger. In 1877, he sent Jainanadanandini Devi to England with an English couple. She went with three children, a daring task in those days. They initially stayed with the family of Prasanna Kumar Tagore's son Nanandramoan Tagore, who had converted to Christianity and was the first Indian to qualify for the English bar. Later they shifted to Brighton and lived on their own there. Subsequently, Satendranath accompanied Rabindranath Tagore in what was the latter's first visit to England. All of them returned to India in 1880. It was not only with his wife, but also his sisters that he took the lead to change things. His sister Sudamini Devi wrote, The mocking we faced when we went out in the carriages is difficult to believe now, thus were laid the foundations of freeing the upper and middle class women from the purda. It was a major achievement of Satendranath Tagore, Jainanadanandini Devi contributed in some unique ways also. As she had to go out in society, she developed a style of wearing the sari, which is broadly followed by Indian women today. She also introduced the use of proper undergarments. Jainanadanandini Devi took special interest in children's matters and started the system of observing birthdays of children in the family, giving them gifts and celebrating the occasion. She started and edited a magazine named Balak for Children in 1885. It was possibly the first magazine for children in the Bengali language. The magazine motivated Rabindranath to write for children. Many of the pieces included in his book Sishu were first published in Balak. The magazine was wound up after a year and merged with the family magazine Bharati. Other activities Patriotism The Tagore family were strong Indian patriots. In an age when it was de rigueur to imitate Western dress habits and to speak the English language in Indian high society, the Tagores kept Indian dress and chose to cultivate Bengali. While admiring the positive qualities he considered British society to possess, Satendranath himself took the view it was necessary to reform and cultivate the Indian society which already existed. He was one of the people associated with the Hindu Mela, whose purpose was to awaken this sense of patriotism in the lives of ordinary Indians. When the first session was held in April 1867, he was away in western India. However, he was present in Calcutta for the second session in 1868. He composed the song Mile Sabe Bharat Santan, Ekton Gaho Gan Unite, India's Children, Sing in Unison for the occasion, which was hailed as the first national anthem of India. He wrote a number of other such patriotic songs. Brahmo Samaj Satendranath had deep regard for his father Dabendranath and the religion he had taken so much pain to develop. At a considerably young age, he and Manomohun Goes accompanied Keshub Chunder Sen on his campaign to win over the younger generation at Krishnanagar College, in England. Even when he was busy with other work, he found time to preach the ideals of Brahmo Samaj. Later, when he was posted in Ahmedabad, he sent a report about Brahmo Samaj to Max Muller. It was included in Muller's biography, written by his wife. Socio-literary activities On retirement, he lived for some time in Park Street and then in Baligunj in Calcutta. His house was a meeting place for his friends and relatives. Amongst those from outside the family who visited him regularly were Taraknath Palat, Manomohun Ghose, Satyendraprasana Sinha, Umesh Banerjee, Krishna Govinda Gupta, and Bihari Lal Gupta, all important people of the age in Kolkata. His house on Park Street was the center of a literary majlis gathering. The deliberations were noted in a book which was not to be circulated outside the family and it was not printed. Among the subjects discussed were Bengali language and the Bengali character. The elements of poetry, chivalry, 
Love in Women and in Men. He was president of Vangya Sahitya Parishad from 1901, and presided over the tenth session of the Bengal Provincial Conference held at Natori in 1897. Works Sishila O. Bursinga, Play, 1867, Bombay Chitra, 1888, Nabaratnamala, Strizvadhanata, Buddhadharma, 1901, Amar Balyakatha O. Bombay Prabhas, 1915, Bharatvarsya Ingray, 1908, Raja Ram Mohan Roy. Children <laughs> 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 Both his children, Surendranath Tagore (1872–1940) and Indira Devi Chodorani (1873–1960), were well-known figures. They had the experience of English life as children. Surendranath had great command over English and had translated Rabindranath's four chapters into that language. He had produced a condensed version of the main portion of Mahabharata in Bengali. In his time, he had links with militant revolutionary organizations fighting for Indian independence from the British, which were considered terrorists by the British establishment. Indira was a great French scholar and was an authority on music, particularly Rabindrasangeet. She was vice-chancellor of Viswa Bharati University. She was married to Pramatha Chowdhury, the noted Bengali author. Supriyo Tagore, the longest serving principal of Santiniketan Patha Bhavan, is one of his great grandsons, and Ashita Das, a principal of the Calcutta Patha Bhavan, is one of his great granddaughters. <laughs> 